Hello and welcome to this new blog post where we will have a look at RFID sensors that control the access to a vehicle in our example and that is doing the time recordings for us that we can use in a second step for allocating costs. So for this post I make a short agenda. First we will have a look at the use case, then we will have a quick look at the technical configuration of my sensor. Then we will do the demo and then I will close with a summary and outlook of additional use cases for this um, configuration. But let's start first with the use case. So in my example, I have a company that has a carpool and an employee of this company wants to use one of the vehicles and then travel to a customer. And of course, what we want to do is we want to charge the cost center of this employee um, with the cost for using the vehicle. Uh, so for example, everything around the administration of the carpool, um, the depreciation and related costs, this should be allocated um, or charged to the cost center of the employee. And the focus on of this post is on um, the charge that is based on the actual use time. Yeah? Um, the difference from the um, Lego rental app that um, I showed you uh, in, in one of my, my previous posts is that we really charge the actual use time and not um, the time uh, a vehicle is reserved. This was the case in the Lego rental app. Yeah? Um, but this time we really want to um, charge based on the actual use time. And the other thing is here, which will be important for later on, that I have a single access to control the vehicle. I will come back to this point later when we um, close and summarize these things here. Okay, now let's have a look at the technical configuration. First, the equipment that I used, I have a quite cheap Arduino board. Here's an uh, electric motor to open and close the doors. Then I have here the RFID chip and the card and the sensor and that's the configuration. So here I have the Arduino, then this is the sensor, the chips and this the motor. And of course this looks a bit boring and that's why I attached it to this very special vehicle. So you can see a couple of wheels, then you see here the motor to open and lock the door. We have here the Arduino, we have there the sensor, then we have here the electricity supply because my battery ran out of uh, energy. And then we have here the chips, the Lego driver, and here in front these are some balancing weights because we noticed that uh, the, the vehicle is not very stable if we put too much weight at the end. Um, the project that I used and the code is modified from, from these two pages. Yeah? Um, where I found some, some similar configurations and I extended and adjusted that to my case. That's the Arduino code, but we will not go through it. What is important though is this one here. Um, this yellow highlighted transponder ID is this. This is the number that identifies the employee and um, that allows us to open and lock the door of the car. Uh, so not everybody in the company is allowed to use the vehicle yeah? and uh, by adding this into the code we can um, specify who can use a specific uh, vehicle. And of course because uh, we have here a, a smart IoT sensor we can update this over the air. Uh, so nobody really needs to go to the car or create a new chip or something but you can do this um, from your office. That's the, the Arduino thing that I configured. Yeah, that's pretty similar to what we did in the previous post. The important thing here is this webhook that I need to trigger the flow later on. Yeah. And here's the process. So let me quickly go through it. The green process is basically the process where we go to the car, open it and start traveling. Yeah. And here the employee unlocks the car with his card or chip. Then we have an update on the IoT dashboard and the variables. 
the webhook triggers a flow and then we do an update in an Excel table. So this is how it looks like. Yeah? And instead of an Excel table, you can use Dataverse, you can use any kind of database where you write this record in. Yeah? Then once you return the vehicle, then the employee locks the car again with his chip card. There's an update of the variables and the dashboard. The webhook triggers against the flow. And then um, we do an update of the usage time. We calculate how long was the vehicle used. And then we use this um, at a price and then do the charge in Dynamics 365. And here again, the pictures. But of course, instead of going through this PowerPoint, I would like to show you the whole process in uh, my, my environment or the setup that I made. So let's switch to this and have a look at how this works in practice. Okay, so I'm now here on my desk and on the right hand side you can see my vehicle. So here's the RFID chip and here is the lock for the door of the vehicle. Yeah? And on the left side, you can see my um, dashboard of my sensor and you can see that the vehicle is currently not in use. Yeah? So it means this one means no, it's, it's available. And this is the last user that was using the car. And the first thing that I want to show you is if an employee that has a, a chip code that is not um, included in um, the persons who can use the car, if this person tries to open it, then nothing happens. Yeah? But if we have um, an employee that has, let's say, a chip card, so here's my chip card. If this employee opens the car or puts it in front of this sensor, then you see the door opens yeah? and the value here um, changes to in use. And that's the user ID that is um, embedded in the, in the chip card. Okay, my phone does not like me today. So let's try again. Because we forget the most important thing. The most important thing is that to put the driver inside of the seat. Of course now um, he's traveling with the car and uh, visiting the customer. Yeah. And of course um, what I did in, in, the, in the sensor configuration is that this door opens and closes within two seconds. That's of course not perfect. Um, but this was um, the way how I configured it. Okay, then let's look at the next step. And the next step is basically triggered by this webhook here. Huh? So the webhook um, sends out an email that goes then um, to my flow. Huh? So here's my flow. And if we open it, we can see that this webhook actually sends out an email that arrives here with a specific subject. And then I filter this, this email because it, I'm looking only for a specific part um, that includes the start and stop time. Yeah? Once I have this part of the triggering email, I grab here a token and can take the data from the Arduino IoT dashboard. Yeah? And here I take then the, the last time um, the, the timestamp was, was um, set so basically when the car was started to use, I can identify the user ID. So that's the chip ID um, that is embedded into the card. And based on this ID, I can then identify the name of the user and the, the cost center. Yeah. Then I can grab the status and whether the vehicle is in use. Yeah. If the car is not available, yeah, so if this condition is false. Then I add a row into my table. Uh, and let me show you that table. Um, this is a simple table that I put on SharePoint. Uh, and here in line 17, you can see the employee with this chip card ID started to use the car from this time onwards. And the car or vehicle is currently not available. Uh, and that's what this condition is doing. Uh, now, Let's assume that we return the vehicle. Huh? So let us go back to my dashboard. 
which is still green here uh, and also show you the phone I have to reopen it just a second so that you can see what I'm doing uh, so now imagine the person is finished traveling around and now he closes the car and leaves it uh, to continue his work in the office so here he presses the, the button or the RFID chip again and again we were too slow so let's move the driver out but you could see that this in use parameter changed uh, so the vehicle is no longer in use uh, and what happens then in the flow is that we end up here in this branch uh, we update a row and update basically the stop time and then I take the start and end time, calculate the difference and then create a journal. Yeah? And the start and end time, I just did the calculation in a way um, that, um, that I calculate full minutes. Yeah? So I did not um, call or, or calculate or do some rounding. I just used the um, full minutes here. And then I have a journal header and then journal lines. Yeah. Um, so let's have first a look at my table. So you could see that now the vehicle is available again. This is the rental end time. So 32 minus 29 gives three minutes. And in my calculation where I create a journal, I said I, I have a price of 10, 10 euros per minute. Yeah. So let's have a look um, how I did that. So here is, wait a minute, that's in the amount that we post. That's here. I say, okay, take the full minutes uh, and multiply it by 10. Uh, and the full minutes just ignores the decimal places. Uh, that's this thing the way. So if we are correct, then we should see here a new journal that is created. That's this one. If we click in the lines, then we see, okay, for the three minutes, um, 30 euros. And then we have here the cost center 10. That's the cost center of the employee who borrowed the car. Yeah? So let's have a look at the last run to, to verify this. So that's the last run. And uh, based on the chip ID, um, we should see that the user identified is this time um, Ludwig and Ludwig is working for cost center 10 yeah? and this is the cost center that gets charged yeah? here in this case I just selected the existing travel expense account yeah? and the offset is then here um, the cost center that holds the depreciation expense of the vehicle yeah? um, that's what I what I selected here of course you can make this better and you can set up um, secondary cost accounts, statistical cost accounts. But I hope the idea became clear how this works yeah? um, and how you can combine IoT solutions um, with finance applications. Yeah? So now after this short demo, let us go back to my PowerPoint for a short summary of the whole process. And then let's have a look at alternative scenarios um, that yeah, can be used for similar business processes. So after this demo, let's have a quick look at the summary that I prepared. And this basically summarizes the process. Yeah? So we started with um, this RFID um, sensor and the chip cards. Then um, we unlocked the car and we started using it. Then Flow was grabbing the data and updated a record in an Excel sheet. And as I said before, you can use Dataverse or any other um, table um, where you record the usage data. Then we come back um, with the vehicle, return it, and then we lock the car, uh, also with our RFID chip. This changes the status on our um, cloud application in the dashboard. We grab the data with flow, and then we update the Excel table again as a kind of um, a record that helps us identifying who was traveling 
on on what day yeah because there might be accidents or some some things that needs to be fixed yeah? and then we might need to know who actually used the car and then of course the last step was to um, charge the cost center of the employee with the costs uh, for the usage okay so what are other finance related applications of this um, RFID scenario so one if one is here on on top that's a car sharing provider in Germany um, where you just use your card uh, hold it against here a panel and then the car opens so that's basically the, the similar real case scenario that I showed you here with my Lego car then on the right hand side we have access control systems so if you work in a laboratory and need to uh, use some special or expensive machines or equipment then you can do the same so you can record who was using it from what time um, did the usage star start and when did it end yeah? and then make an allocation to the cost center of this employee something similar can be done for cash registers so if you have cash in your company um, then you can see who opened and closed it or you can record the time of employees huh? when it comes to recording time um, the scenario is a bit different because in the example that I used an employee uses the vehicle and returns it then the next one comes uses it and returns it if you want to have a time recording then multiple people might enter one after the other huh? And this requires that you change the code that I used here a bit. But the principle is the same and you can do also time recording um, with this uh, simple RFID chip if you want. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you liked it and found it interesting. Um, and of course, I hope you liked our very special Lego car that we built together. So thanks again for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the next blog post.